As we learned in the previous lesson, the act of writing a program for your robot is essentially just putting together a list of instructions telling your robot what to do. In this lesson, we answer the question, what kinds of things can I instruct my robot to do? The answer is that you can really give the robot two kinds of instructions. First off, robots can sense things. Just like we humans are able to sense with our eyes and our ears and so on, robots can sense things too. How bright is it around the robot? How noisy is it around the robot? Is the robot touching something? Is the robot near something? The robot can also do things. Just like we humans can move and draw and speak, you can give your robot an instruction to move forward 10 inches or maybe move forward 20 seconds. You can instruct your robot to draw a picture of a smiley face or googly eyes on its little screen here, or even print a message on that screen. You can even instruct the robot to say one of several pre-recorded phrases out loud, like good morning or fantastic. And you can get the robot to play a sequence of musical notes in the order that you specify. The educational robot kit comes with four different kinds of sensors, also known as input devices. By sensor, we really just mean a fancy Lego piece that the robot can use to sense what's going on in its environment. If you have a brand new kit, all the sensors can be found in this large white box. They all look a little Lego-y and a little bit geeky. This first sensor is called the touch sensor. You actually get two of these with your kit. The touch sensor has this little orange piece on the end and you'll find you can push it in a little bit. The robot can check whether the orange button on the touch sensor is pressed or released. If the button's pressed, the robot figures that the sensor is touching something. If it's not pressed, well, the robot knows the sensor isn't touching anything, though of course some other part of your robot might be. This second sensor is called the light sensor. The light sensor tells the robot on a scale of 0 to 100 how bright it is in its environment. 0 means it's pretty dark and 100 means it's super bright. If you buy the commercial kit, instead of a light sensor, you'll get what's called a color sensor, which can sense light and also sense six different colors. This is the sound sensor. It's kind of fun. It's essentially just a fancy microphone that tells the robot how noisy its environment is. Again, it uses a scale of zero to 100, where zero means very quiet and 100 means it's very loud. I had a teacher in one of my classes say he was gonna write a program to help the students keep the noise levels down in his classroom by having the robot react whenever it got too loud. The ultrasonic sensor is the coolest sensor in the box. It tells you how far away the robot is from an object that the sensor is pointing at. Lego claims that it can detect objects up to 100 inches away. Some of that depends on how smooth and how large the objects are though. You can actually ask the robot to report the distance in inches or in centimeters, and you'll get back values between 0 and 100 inches or 0 and 250 centimeters. If there's nothing in front of the sensor, it'll just report the maximum reading. So 250 centimeters means either there's an object 250 centimeters away, or it may mean that there's no objects in front of the robot at all. Okay, so now we know something about what robots can sense. What can they do? If you want to be super geeky, you should say that the robot uses its effectors or its output devices to do stuff. But that's really just a fancy way of saying the robot has some special parts that allow it to do things like move or make a sound. Let's take a look at the special parts that come with your robot. The motors are probably the most important part. You get three of these in your kit, though you only need two of them to build the standard robot that LEGO gives you the instructions for in the booklet that comes with the kit. This orange part of the motor can spin around forwards and backwards. When you write a program to control the motors, you can specify both the direction and the speed of their rotation. If you connect this orange part to a wheel and the robot tells the motor to move, then presto, your wheel moves. This big white box is what LEGO calls the NXT Intelligent Brick, though I'll mostly refer to it just as the NXT Brick. It's actually the most important part of your kit, and we'll talk a lot more about it in a minute, as well as in subsequent lessons. On the NXT Brick, there's a small screen, and the robot can display pictures and words on this screen. The robot also has a built-in speaker, and the robot can play pre-recorded sounds and musical notes through its speaker. Some of the earlier educational LEGO kits also came with a lamp brick. 
it's kind of boring. If you connect one of these to your robot, the robot can command it to light up. If your kit didn't come with one, don't worry about it. We're not going to use it. As I said, this NXT brick is the most important part of your kit. It's essentially a small computer and is really the brains of your robot. You'll plug sensors and motors into it, and then you can write programs that sense things or do things or both. On the bottom side of this brick, you'll find these four numbered sockets, one, two, three, and four. These are called the sensor ports. You'll use some cables that look a lot like phone cables to connect your different sensors into these sockets. Up at the top of the brick, you'll find three more sockets labeled A, B, and C, and you'll use these same cables to connect your motors and your lamp brick, if you feel like it, into these sockets that are called motor ports. Up on top, you'll also find a socket labeled USB, and you'll connect your RCX brick to your computer using a cable that comes with the kit. It's actually just a standard USB printer cable. By the way, you won't break your robot if you plug a sensor into a motor port or a motor into a sensor port by mistake or by writing a weird program. If you do plug something in wrong, your program probably won't work the way you want it to, but nothing's going to be broken. While the LEGO robot parts are very robust, it's a good idea not to drop your robot or drive it off the table. The robot may very well survive the drop, but it's better to avoid getting into such situations. Some teachers require their students to always run their programs on the floor, and others use specially built tables with a lip around the edge to prevent the robot from driving off. Let me give you an overview of what it is we're going to be doing. This may seem like a lot, but don't worry, we're going to take it all very slowly and go through everything step by step in future lessons. We're going to start out by building a robot. After that, we'll write our first program, remember that's a recipe, with instructions for your robot to follow. We're going to be writing our programs on a computer. Once the program's written, we'll hook up the robot to the computer using the USB cable and send the program to the robot. Finally, we'll unplug the USB cable from the robot and tell the robot to run our program. 